welcome back to my channel for hopefully very interesting Nikon episode. And you see here in front of me my Nikon Z8. And the Z8 has now the newest firmware 301. It used to be 300 where all the new features came into the firmware, but now it's 301 with some minor bug fixes. Mounted on the camera body, I have my Nikkor CMC 105 millimeter. It's a fully fledged macro lens with a maximum magnification of one on one, so 100%. In the background, you see a strawberry and this strawberry is resting on stones. I'm going to shoot that strawberry. I'm also getting some water over it. So the image becomes a bit more interesting. And uh, what I want to try out is one of the main new features coming with firmware 300. And that's the possibility to combine pixel shift multi-shot with focus bracketing. And that's a fantastic feature because it allows you to shoot images with a resolution of up to 182 megapixel, which are sharp corner to corner. And that's, of course, very useful in macro photography. It's super useful in landscape, in architecture, what have you. And in this video, I will show you the workflow, which I can tell you already now is quite something. Let's kick this off. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please do so. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, share my videos, like them, support my work, and it will help me. I will be very grateful for it. It increases the reach of my channel, but it also strengthens the community we have built up here on this channel when we discuss all kinds of topics on professional photography and photography gear. And now let's go right into the topic. Let me first quickly outline what I have in terms of setup here. I have set the camera to autofocus single because I'm shooting a macro image. I'm on matrix metering and uh, I'm shooting an aperture priority with an aperture of F8. That still will give me a very shallow depth of field with a 105 millimeter macro lens. So I will definitely need focus stacking to get this strawberry and the surrounding stones sharp and in focus corner to corner. I shoot at the base ISO of 64 in order to get the best possible image quality, no signal strengthening at all. This is the purest signal I can get from the sensor. And uh, the feature I'm talking about is here under focus shift shooting. And if I go into this menu here, uh, first of all, I can start the sequence here. I have set this up after some trial and error to a number of shots of 30. The focus step width here is seven. I started actually with a very narrow step size here and took about 100 frames, but the processing of these will take very long. So I figured out I can actually get along with a focus step width of seven and uh, then have 30 frames, which covers the whole frame I want to shoot corner to corner, front to back, I should probably better say. I have a break of one second between the shots. I want to lock the first frame exposure. Um, I will not auto reset here the focus position and uh, I also can choose a folder here. And the new feature is that we have now a menu entry which is called options. And under options, I can switch pixel shift shooting off or I can switch it on. And then I have the usual options here, number of shots. You can choose here between four, eight, 16 and 32. I go for the maximum high resolution, which is close to 182 megapixel. And I also want to have a quick break between the shots and that will produce a lot of frames. I'm going to show you this later in a chart when we speak about workflow. And uh, it's definitely a brand new feature that we can combine now the pixel shift shooting with focus shift shooting. By the way, it's also possible to do this now with auto exposure bracketing, but that's not so interesting for me. For me, really the ability to get these high resolution images and then focus stacking on the computer so that the whole frame front to back gets sharp. That is something I will really use very often on my Nikon C8. And that's why I want to share in our community here how you do it and what the outcome is and how good actually and how clear, clean and crisp the final images look. Under the headline tips and tricks, let me point out the following. There is a little bit of an inconsistency in the logic, how this is implemented, but I want to quickly show you how this works. So if you want to go for focus shift shooting and then later on the computer for focus bracketing, 
You go in this menu and under options, you can activate or deactivate the pixel shift shooting. Now I just said a moment ago, this also works now with auto exposure bracketing, but here you don't go to the bracketing menu, you go to pixel shift shooting. And in pixel shift shooting, you then have an options line item and here you can choose whether you wanna have auto exposure bracketing. And that to me looks a little bit inconsistent. I would have probably implemented this in a more consistent way in the menu, but as long as you know where to look for it and activate or deactivate these options, you will be fine and can use it for your workflow. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I will actually take all the parameters under focus shift shooting and will shoot a sequence of shots in one option where pixel shift shooting is deactivated, so it's off and uh, one series of images where it actually is activated and the number of shots is 32. And then I will go into Lightroom, we'll combine these images, we'll show you the outcome and the difference. Of course, it's a huge difference in terms of resolution and of details you get in the image. And I also want to quickly explain the whole workflow because in post-processing, there are a number of steps you need to take into account here in order to make this a successful project. Okay, let's go to the first focus bracketing sequence. As I said, we have here 30 frames and uh, we'll start the sequence from the start button. But before I want to make a remark, the stones where the strawberry is resting on, they are closer to the camera than the strawberry. So I will start the sequence actually at the bottom. And in order for you to see this, let me quickly get all the information off the screen and let's move the focus field to the part of the frame which is closest to the camera and the lens. And let's focus here. So we found focus, so we are ready to take that sequence. I can now go into the menu, go to focus shift shooting, check my parameters the very last time, 30 frames, focus step with seven, and so on and so on. Focus pixel shift shooting is off, so we are good to go and we can start this. I just press the button here, then the camera will get prepared and we get 30 frames on the compact flash express type B card. Let's get this going. Preparing, you see. The camera rests very sturdy on a tripod here and now it's shooting and uh, we can actually switch the video off for a moment and come back when the sequence is completed. Okay, the sequence is completed. Let's repeat this and this will take now much, much longer and uh, activate here under options the pixel shift shooting. So we go here, pixel shift shooting, we say 32, one second in between, that's fine. Let's go back. Let's start this. Oh, it's still switched off. I should actually activate it. Otherwise it's not working. So here we go. And now we go back and we go back and we see here now we have the icon for pixel shift shooting. So let's go here to start. Let's start this. I will again switch the filming camera off and come back when the job is done by the camera. It's preparing. That's always good. It's like an initial delay and then the shooting starts. Let me quickly show the workflow, including all steps in post-processing, what you need to do to make this a success. You saw in the live demonstration, first of all, shooting the sequence is the first step. And you saw how I activated in the focus bracketing menu under options, the pixel shift shooting. All in, that gives me now 960 frames because I did choose 30 frames in focus shifting for the focus bracketing menu. And in the sub menu, I have now 32 pixel shifted frames. So all in 960 frames, since they all have full resolution, they are all in the raw format. That's a lot of material. You need some computational power to actually get this processed. I have a MacBook Pro with an M4 chip and there it works reasonably well, what I'm going to show you now in the next steps. Then I imported all 960 frames into NX Studio from Nikon. And here is an ingenious feature because the software recognizes automatically by itself pixel shifted sequences. And all 30 sequences were automatically detected. I checkbox them all and then NX Studio is processing this into 30 pixel shifted frames in the format NEFX. Now, unfortunately, the NEFX format cannot be read by Helicon Focus, which is the stacking software out of the box. So I had to send them to the Adobe RAW converter and Adobe RAW converter converted all these NEFX frames into now 30 pixel shifted combined DNG files. And now we have the right input for Helicon Focus. So I sent them into Helicon Focus 
and let Helicon Focus process the focus stacking. And in this way, I ended up with one frame only, which I could save again in the raw format for further post-processing, for instance, in Lightroom. And this frame now has close to 182 megapixel and we have sharpness and focus front to back. That's the way it works. I hope that helps. If you want to try this out yourself, follow that workflow and you will be on the safe side. All right, let's look into these two images, which we just shot. The first one here, one fourth of a second, aperture f8.0, ISO 64, base ISO for the Nikon C8 and 45.4 uh, megapixel. And you see, this is really sharp front to back because we did shoot it with the focus bracketing menu and uh, we did shoot 30 frames, which I stacked together in Helicon Focus. And if you look here, the stone is sharp. You see a lot of details. Look at the strawberry. It's actually very hairy, this type of fruits. And uh, everything looks good, sharp and in focus. Look at the leaves here on the strawberry. It's a pretty detailed, pretty good image, I think. Let's now combine this with the second image based on pixel shift shooting in the sub menu of the focus bracketing menu. Let's put them side by side. And you see on the right hand side, we have now 181.8, so close to 182 megapixel. And this is coming now from the combination of pixel shift shooting in the options menu of the focus bracketing menu in the way I just demonstrated in the workflow in my presentation. And you see here, we have again an F8.0, base ISO 64. In all the processing, the metadata and the final frame changed from one fourth to one third of a second. That's not a problem for me. And as I said, close to 182 megapixel. And that of course gives us a much higher level of detail and the ability to crop in, which is very useful. As I mentioned before, you would apply this to landscape, architecture, macro photography, what have you. It's just a very useful technique if you need this extra amount of resolution and detail in the images. So let's crop in here on the right hand side. You see, I freshly watered the strawberry with my spray here and you see this on the stone. So let's look here at the front side. This is very, very sharp, very clean, much higher resolution. Let's look here on the right hand side. Looks really good to me. Let's look to the strawberry and uh, you see here tiny little water drops coming from that spraying process, which I did just before I took the shots. Looks very good, very detailed. And uh, you see, of course, now how ugly a strawberry is, to be honest. <laughs> you really want to bite in that thing. I mean, look at the hairs, the tiny little trunks coming out of the seeds here. Oh my gosh, I never saw a strawberry in that microscopic magnification. And uh, that is, of course, nice. It looks good. It gives you the extra amount of detail. It's sharp front to back. And I think we can work with this if we need more resolution, if we need more detail. All right, that's all I wanted to say and show. I hope you like my presentation of the workflow. I think this feature is ingenious for Nikon C8 shooters. This is absolutely what we waited for because you can combine the pixel shift shooting now with focus bracketing and that helps you as I said before, in landscape, in architecture, in particular in macro photography, to get images which are front to back, sharp, crisp, and just look very well, as my strawberry here, which you saw in Lightroom. If you liked that video, don't forget to drop me a thumbs up. Stay tuned on my channel. There's always more to come. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and healthy. And of course, peace out.